Greetings and salutations everyone, my name is Andrew Kirchhoff and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today we're talking about my week 6 running back starter sets for the 2019 fantasy football season. On today's episode we're going to be going over news around the National Football League that pertains to fantasy football, then going over the matchups for week 6 at the running back position, then going over my top 36 running back rankings on the week. Before we get into that, let me remind all of you, if you haven't yet already, click that subscribe button, join the community. Don't forget to click the bell notification button to stay up to date with my latest content. And also, click the like button on today's video. Hey guys, how's it going? Alright, so before we get into talking about the running back position, a couple pieces of news um, that is pretty relevant. Um, earlier this morning, Jalen Samuels, running back, well, back running back for the Pittsburgh Steelers, underwent surgery on his knee. He will be out for probably a month. It's the typical knee scope that um, you know caused Michael Gallup to miss a couple weeks. It's kind of the same deal. So for those of you who are James Conner owners, or for those of you who are potentially thinking that they could still run that Wildcats uh, scheme in the future, uh, I would suggest picking up uh, Benny Snell Jr., he is the technical third string running back of that team, uh, and he could contribute potentially and or be that handcuff uh, for the next coming weeks. Outside of that, in terms of news, uh, Cam Newton has been ruled out for week six. Um, Sam Darnold has been approved, and he's going to play this week against the Cowboys. On top of that, the Thursday night matchup, for those of you, it's just around the corner. Um, the likelihood of Saquon Barkley... Uh, Sterling Shepard, Wayne Gallman, and Evan Ingram all missing the game is very likely. They, those four are all dealing with injuries at the moment, uh, and the chances are that they are not going to play. Therefore, uh, there are probably very little options on the uh, Giants that we want to go ahead and invest in or at least trust in this game. I understand they're still an NFL team. They're going to move the ball, but the Patriots have been great. Uh, they've had extremely easy matchups thus far, but this doesn't seem like uh, it's going to be too difficult for them either. So as of right now, we kind of want to avoid all Giants this week. Uh, only a couple here and there, unless you, you know, if you're playing in a deeper league, obviously you'll be forced to play a couple of these guys, but just wanted to uh, make sure everyone was on the same page on that, um, that place. Uh, also, I think Philip Dorsett, who dropped a zero this past week, speaking of Thursday night, um, did not practice yesterday. Um, so we'll see. We'll, we'll keep an eye on that and we'll see exactly uh, where they're trending towards. All right. So those are the little pieces of news that I just wanted to mention before we get into today's video. Uh, funny thing is, yesterday when I recorded that video, um, I was talking about, hey, the Redskins might you know, fire their head coach. Next thing you know, as soon as I post this video, there he is. He's gone. I'm like, all right. Well, it feels good. Um, regardless, let's get into it, shall we? Uh, before we get into talking about my top 36 running back rankings let's talk about the matchups at the running back position going into week six again a reminder the bears raiders colts and if i'm not mistaken what's the last team um who are we? in the bills those four teams are all on bye week so nobody go in the comment section asking where is you know marlon mack it happens every week last week somebody asked me where carry on johnson was the week before somebody asked me where Le'Veon bell was come on guys you got to remember there's bye weeks uh, and they're only getting more and more progressively um, more intense as more and more teams are uh, beginning to have more bye weeks. All right, so talking about the running back position and talking about matchups, um, the Miami Dolphins give up the most points to opposing running backs. That's for certain. They are a terrible defense, a team in rebuilding. As of right now, with the changing at the head coach position for the Washington Redskins, the interim head coach came out and said, I do not believe that Gruden ran the ball enough. Therefore, there is a likelihood that this week Adrian Peterson is going to have himself a pretty decent performance, uh, which we'll go over in a little bit. Him and Chris Thompson are going to be used against this Miami Dolphins defense. I'm sure the Redskins want to pick up a W uh, while the Miami Dolphins want to tank, so they'll do that accordingly. Cincinnati Bengals, another team that, again, like I mentioned yesterday with Gus Edwards, uh, Mark Ingram and him are pretty much going to be running all over this defense. Uh, it's just it's pretty simple, straightforward. Um, the Green Bay Packers, even though Zeke didn't have a fantastic game in terms of uh, fantasy points, but he had like 16 and a half point PPR, um, a lot of that having to do with the game script, also having to do with Tyron Smith's absent and then Lyle Collins, uh, the right tackle, going out with injury. I do think that Green Bay um, still has a weakness against the run. Kerryon Johnson could put something together this week um, and have himself a good performance on Monday night. That should be a fun contest between the two teams. Speaking of that context, on the other side, the team that's giving up the fourth most points to opposing running backs, the Detroit Lions. So we saw what Aaron Jones was capable of doing on, you know, Sunday afternoon against the Cowboys, running all over them, putting up four rushing touchdowns. Seemed, you know, One of the most incredible performances I've seen in quite some time in terms of an offensive line just battering a defense. Um, and... You know, the, the Lions, 
they're they're no I mean it might be a beat down we'll see both teams are gonna have a pretty fun time running the ball I think uh, I think it should be a higher scoring event on Monday um, so yeah that's a, that's a game to keep your eye out on uh, the Denver Broncos even though they you know really didn't allow anything for the Chargers still a team giving up points to the running back position the Jaguars got torched absolutely torched by McCaffrey they get to play against Camara this week then you have the Dallas Cowboys, like I mentioned, getting destroyed. Uh, Le'Veon Bell has his, you know, fair shot at them. Uh, the Washington Redskins, another team that, you know, winless, can't play defense. Kenyon Drake has a really good opportunity, like I mentioned yesterday, as a waiver wire pickup for those of you uh, who potentially have him available in your league because people dropped him last week because he was on bye. Uh, the Cleveland Browns <laughs> destroyed yesterday by... Um, one of the better running teams in the National Football League with a two-headed monster with Matt Breida and Tevin Coleman that are absolutely taking over. Uh, and then the Rams. You know, the Rams are just defensively inept. So we'll, we'll get over that in a little bit. All right, moving on. Uh, teams that are better against the run. The Oakland Raiders are on a bye week. Arizona Cardinals, typically because they can't stop the pass, even if I really do think uh, against the run they're not great. So um, the Atlanta Falcons should be fine. Uh, playing against them and then speaking of the Atlanta Falcons they are also giving up not too many points to opposing running backs um, but they're not good against the run it's typically because teams are just throwing on them and being able to take advantage and a lot of it has to do with shootouts and being able to stay ahead Uh, moving on the Titans that is a legit one people typically can't run against the Titans and Philip Lindsay is going to have a tough time this week the Saints another team that is great against the run Leonard Fournette has to take his you know chances at that the Eagles uh, look at this. The Eagles are only allowing 47.8 rushing yards per game thus far this season. Pretty ridiculous, right? Um, and then moving on, we have the Vikings, the Buccaneers, the Patriots, and the 49ers. A bunch of good teams uh, and pretty favorable matchups this week in terms of stopping the running back <coughs> position. Excuse me. Um, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, they get another chance at Christian McCaffrey. Christian McCaffrey has a t- chance to redeem himself. Will he be able to do so? That's the biggest question. But anyway, these are how many points defenses are giving to opposing running backs on a weekly basis, on average, in half-point PPR scoring format. So for those of you who are interested, check that out. And let's go ahead and move on. Let's talk about my top 36 running back rankings. As I've always mentioned, rankings are always subject to change. Rankings are ever-changing. For me, every single day, rankings change. Um, For those of you who are uh, Patreon members, you'll know that I post rankings. Uh, or I try to post rankings as often as possible, uh, but I definitely post it like three, four times a week. So they are ever changing on Monday, or excuse me, on Tuesday to Thursday completely changes from Tuesday to Saturday changes, Saturday night to Sunday morning. It always changes as well. So rankings are subject to change. Do not assume these are staying as put throughout the entire week. Before we get into that, also timestamps are down below. Um, and my Patreon link is down below while we're out there. Okay. Let's get into it, shall we? Number one, Alvin Kamara. Like I mentioned, the Saints get to take on the Jacksonville Jaguars. And when we were able to see the Carolina Panthers muster up in terms of offense, they ran all over the Jacksonville Jaguars. Uh, In fact, the backup, Bonifant, came in when Christian McCaffrey was dealing with cramps. uh, And he had himself a nice 60-yard run for a touchdown. Truly, they could not stop anybody. I really do believe the absence of Jalen Ramsey is hurting this team in terms of a leadership, in terms of um, just the mentality of this defense. They don't look the same. They haven't. On that Thursday night against the Tennessee Titans, they look like an elite defense. Since then, without Ramsey in the lineup, they haven't looked great. Um, And I don't think he's coming back. He's dealing with back injuries. He wants to be traded, absolutely. I heard somewhere where um, the Jacksonville Jaguars... Um, I think they were offered two first round picks and they declined that. I don't know what more you want for him. What more do you want for me? Okay, anyway, uh, if somebody understands that meme, then thank you. But either way, I think Alvin Kamara this week uh, has been pretty quiet in the last you know couple weeks uh, since that Seattle Seahawks game where he had a monster performance of 30 plus points. Hopefully he can get back on track against the Jaguars. In Jacksonville, sure, but I really do think uh, Alvin Kamara is my number one. All right, moving on to number two. Speaking of Christian McCaffrey, the guy that is leading the running back position in half-point PPR by nearly 30 points scored. Yes, he is a far and away the best running back in fantasy football right now. Um, Even without Cam Newton in the lineup, they have been incredible. Um, The the guy is a terminator. I mean, uh, who would have thought that Christian McCaffrey... I mean, obviously, we saw him perform incredibly last year, but in terms of coming out of the draft, his size, his stature, his ability, man, he has just proven everyone wrong. He continues to do so every week. He he plays like he has a chip on his shoulder, um, 
And, you know, he's proven everybody wrong. But either way, uh, in terms of fantasy, been fantastic. Hasn't been slowing down even from since last year. If anything, he's only gotten better. And going forward, yes, this is a little bit tougher matchup against Tampa Bay. Um, in Tampa Bay, but I, I think he'll be fine. Uh, he's my number two. Moving on to number three, Ezekiel Elliott. Uh, I think this coming week against the Jets, yes, Sam Darnold is back. That offense is going to be more relevant on the side of the Jets, but I do think and I do believe that the the Cowboys need to get back to the fundamentals, right? They need to run the ball consistently, and they need to be able to dictate the game with their defense and their running game. Excuse me. Uh, so I really do believe a guy like Ezekiel Elliott this coming week against the Jets um, is going to be given the ball a lot. I, I really do believe the only way that the Cowboys get back to winning football games is, yeah, you can sure, maybe throw it out, you know, just throw it to Cooper, throw it to Gallup, throw it to Witten, and just, you know, air it out. You can do that, sure. But the pass rush is going to get after you when you're, you know, your two, your right and your left tackle are both out. I really do believe they need to get back to the fundamentals. They need to run the ball. They need to feed Zeke the ball 20 times a game on the ground alone. You paid them all that money, and it's time to start proving it. I think they'll start doing that this week. Either way, Zeke's one of the top backs, so he's my number three this week. Moving on to number four, David Johnson. David Johnson's been surprisingly very good, uh, even without getting a lot of work on the ground. A lot of David Johnson's production through the air, not a surprise, this offense you know, a lot of spread formations, using him as a wide receiver, one of the most talented receiving backs in the league. Uh, thus far this season, David Johnson has had pretty good performances, racking it up in the last couple of weeks. In terms of fantasy production, I mean, I mean, 15 and a half, 17.9, 17.1 in the last three weeks, even with limited usage on the ground, that just shows that no matter what is happening, whether the game script is out of hand and they need to come back, David Johnson's not going to be faded away, similar to like an Ezekiel Elliott, like I just mentioned. David Johnson's always going to be in the game script because of how much he is utilized in the passing game. Having a running back that has that kind of value, uh, it just it pays dividends, especially in fantasy. So this coming week against the Atlanta Falcons defense, great matchup for them. Should be a shootout. I like David Johnson as my number four. Moving on to number five, Dalvin Cook. Like I mentioned before, the Eagles are only allowing, on average, 47.8 rushing yards per game to opposing running backs. Now, this is going to be a tough matchup, but I do not believe it is going to affect Dalvin Cook enough to where you are leaving him on the bench or, or, or forcing him to sit. Dalvin Cook's way too talented. He gets too much work in the passing game regardless of whether or not they can effectively run the ball. Uh, he's too explosive of a runner as of right now, and this offense is built around them. So they're going to find a way to incorporate him as much as they possibly can. And once they do that, you know he's going to find his value similar to how he did a couple weeks back against the Bears. He should be fine in the passing game. Uh, and then he always has the capability of breaking off a big run. You know, we saw, you know, Saquon Barkley torch that uh, Eagles defense many times last season. Uh, and many, many running backs are capable of doing so. And I think Dalvin Cook is one of them. That's why he maintains his top five stature. Uh, he's the number two running back in fantasy. And uh, he's my number five on the week. All right, moving on to number six, Chris Carson. Man, Chris Carson, after those three fumbles, right, we were all very concerned. Many Chris Carson owners were thinking, is it over? Do we need a hold? Uh, Rashad Penny and once he comes back is that hamstring injury you know as soon as it heals up are they going to transition to Rashad Penny the former 2018 first round pick is there a possibility that Chris Carson's days as the starting running back of this Seahawks team is over well uh, Pete Carroll pretty much proved everybody or silenced the critics as of right now in the last two weeks Chris Carson, 22 rushing attempts, 27 rushing attempts, broke over 100 yards in both games. This past week against the Rams had an incredible performance. This coming week, they get to play against the Browns. And what we saw, Matt Breida and Tevin Coleman, Raheem Moster, that offensive line without Joe Staley, we were able to watch them do yet yesterday in Monday Night Football, which I'll talk about a little bit probably after the, uh, after the rankings. It was incredible. They absolutely uh, destroyed them. And I think... For a team like the Seattle Seahawks that are very um, run-oriented and they want to set up runs and they want to use play action, I really do think that Chris Carson going into this week against the defense that, I mean, got battered, I really do believe Chris Carson is a uh, is a great play this week. We saw Rashad Penny be used. Um, he got himself, what, like six fantasy points last week, half PPR scoring format. Uh, he is going to be used as a receiving back. Chris Carson isn't a premier receiving back, but even then, even late in the game, um, fourth and goal, Chris Carson lined up in the slot, went out, caught a touchdown to win the game. 
Hopefully that leans Chris Carson to catch him more balls as the season progresses. He's my number six in the week. Moving on to number seven, Aaron Jones. Speaking of, oh man, incredible performances. Aaron Jones, four touchdowns. I mean, over 150 yards um, from scrimmage. Just destroy the Cowboys. He gets his hands on the Detroit Lions, who have had a bye week, who have been prepping for this Green Bay Packers game, an in-division game uh, with the, what is it, the NFC North. Uh, these two these two teams, they're, they're going to be swinging. And I think Aaron Jones is obviously, like we've seen in the last couple weeks, a vital part of this offense. This Packers team is nothing near what they used to be in the past, where it's a pass-heavy team. They want to run the ball. They want to dictate games by running the ball. Aaron Rodgers was pretty much irrelevant this past week in fantasy because all he had to do was hand off the ball. No Devontae Adams, no problem. We're going to just run the ball. And I think going into this coming week's matchup against the Lions, Aaron Jones continuing to see a lot of work, hopefully gets more and more of the snap share, more and more of the backfield attempts, and uh, it's going to lead to success. He's my number seven. Moving on to number eight, Le'Veon Bell. Like I mentioned uh, last week, had a poor performance, but to be honest, um, I really do believe we can... We can chalk up Le'Veon Bell's inconsistency, if any that we've seen thus far, to the fact that Sam Donald hasn't been in the lineup for a couple weeks now. Even then, without without even uh, Sam Donald in the lineup, he was able to muster up some pretty good performances uh, in the receiving game. I do believe this coming week against the Cowboys, the Cowboys are going to try to you know fix that problem that they had. Still, Le'Veon Bell is a very capable running back, and if not the one of the best running backs in the NFL in terms of catching the ball out of the backfield, whether or not they have to run him up the middle, uh, Le'Veon Bell is going to find success. He is the the most important offensive piece for the Jets at this moment in time. We could tr- say, yeah, you know what Sam Darnold is, but if you had a relevant or even a capable backup quarterback, if you had a Nick Foles sitting back there, if you had some- somebody capable, they would have been able to do something for the last couple of weeks. Uh, but either way, Le'Veon Bell this week, I like the matchup, uh, and I think he's going to see a lot of usage going forward. Uh, so he's my number eight. Moving on to number nine, Derrick Henry. Okay, so here's the thing about Derrick Henry. Um, continues to see a shit ton. I mean, a lot, guys. A lot of... Pr- I mean... The amount of handoffs that he's seen, 19, 15, 17, 27, 20. Not slowing down, has only broke 100 yards once this season, which is unfortunate, but he has played against defenses that are pretty stout against the run. Last week against Buffalo, was still able to muster up some pretty decent um, yards per carry. He gets to play against Denver. If, in fact, we see the Denver defense, I mean, Denver's defense, uh, they had a little bit of a break this past week. Sure, the... um, the combination of Austin Eckler and Melvin Gordon, they ran for, what, like 15 times and they had like 38 yards? Two yards per carry? Awful, right? That's terrible. But if we can see Derrick Henry kind of tap into what Leonard Fournette did a couple weeks back and ran for 200 yards in Denver, Colorado, I really think that Derrick Henry, of all people, is very capable of you know having a big game here against the Chargers. Therefore, he's sitting at my number nine spot. He gets way too many touches um, to be anywhere outside of this area. Uh, and he's always got the the capability or the um, you know the possibility of him breaking out a big run for a touchdown. He's always the goal line back, and um, it should look good. I mean, the only reason Derrick Henry is not any better than he's been in the last couple weeks, he's had double digit fantasy points. Don't get me wrong. The only reason he hasn't been better is because of the inefficiency of um, Marcus Mariota. You know, this past week offensively couldn't get the ball moving. The week prior. They scored early and just ran the clock out. You know, no, no big plays. The week before that against Jacksonville, couldn't move the ball offensively. There's a lot of you know disparities in, in, in terms of game script. And when they're down in games and Deion Lewis has to come in more, it hurts them. All right, moving on. Number 10, we have Leonard Fournette. Speaking of Leonard Fournette, who ran for 200 yards um, in, two weeks ago against the Broncos. And then in this past week, broke over 100 rushing yards himself. Leonard Fournette continues to improve. You know, started off slow, um, but has progressively and progressively gotten better, uh, gotten more rushing attempts. In the last two weeks, 29 rushing attempts, 23 rushing attempts. Seems to be the receiving back of this offense, uh, like we, which we want to see, absolutely. Plays against New Orleans, a defense that is very, a defense that is very stout against the run. Um, this defense is not going to let you just push them over. This might be a one-sided affair where... Um, we see the New Orleans Saints really dominate this Jacksonville offense. But in my opinion, I do think that they're um, 
there, there's going to be opportunities for Leonard Fournette, Gardner Minshew, and DJ Chark to figure it out. Um, I think he's way too good of a running back. And if he continues to see these amount of touch it, touches as the season progresses, um, he's only going to continue and continue to um, have an opportunity to break out a big run, which we've seen him do in the past, and set everything in track. So as of right now, I'm a little worried about the matchup, but I still trust Leonard Ford enough to have him as my top 10 back. So he's my number 10. Moving on. Number 11, Todd Gurley. Scored four touchdowns in the last two weeks. Um, all four on the ground. All four on the goal line. Um, and that's what we should expect, right? Todd Gurley associated with one of the better offenses in the National Football League, a team that really doesn't know how to play defense anymore. As of right now, they get to play against the 49ers next week. 49ers looked very good against the Browns, but I think... Um, if we, I mean, thinking about it, right, the Browns were pretty competitive against the the Rams a couple weeks ago. So is there going to be a, a pretty big blowout in the midst? I don't know. Uh, there, there's always a chance of that. Clay Matthews is out. He broke his jaw against the Seahawks last Thursday. Um, Reader, the, oh man, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a Rams fan, so I can, I can ramble about their defense playing like garbage. But we're talking about Todd Gurley. Okay, let's focus, Andrew. Todd Gurley does not see enough rushing attempts in order for him to be 100% dependable as a top, you know, running back. That Those days are pretty much over now. This past week, 15 rushing attempts has gone back to what they typically have him at. You know, this thus far this season, 14, 16, 14, 15, right? That one game against Tampa Bay where he only had, where he only had five rushing attempts was because they were down 21 to 0. They had to throw the ball the entire time. That's why he had 11 targets, 7 receptions. So just to kind of put it in perspective, 15 rushes, if he continues to see that, as long as he, I mean, he is the goal line back of this team, he's going to have fantasy value because he's going to get in the end zone, garbage time or not. Uh, that's how this team works. They're always going to be able to score. Uh, and I think Todd Gurley this week is my number 11. Uh, you should just be confident in the fact that uh, this offense is going to score. And typically... It goes to Gurley on the goal line. All right, moving on. Number 12, we have Nick Chubb. Nick Chubb didn't play bad last night at all. Uh, in fact, it was just Baker. Baker and, you know, Callaway getting that ball slipped out of his hands. You know, turnovers kill offenses. And I really do think that it's it's kind of confusing to think that Freddie Kitchens can go from, hey, um, we're going to run the ball heavily against the Ravens and just run um, all these, you know, counter power uh, zone cutback schemes out of you know under the center um, in an eye formation uh, you know an offset eye sometimes with the power of um, Ricky Seals Jones as a fullback and then all of a sudden the following week completely just say all right you know what we're down seven you know and we're just gonna we're gonna throw the game away I don't know um, the play calling is a little questionable Nick Chubb is not a bad running back he's just in an offense that runs too much shotgun spread bullshit for him to succeed in right now because he's not getting the ball enough truth be told that is the fact i mean if we go and we look at uh nick chubb here nick chubb this i mean 17 18 23 20 16 that's perfectly fine 16 touches on the ground is not a problem but when you're getting 16 touches on the ground and you're averaging five yards per carry in a game against a team where hey we need to be able to slow this down and not give them the ball back you would think that Nick Chubb would be able to at least be given the ball more and help you know, dictate the game. Unfortunately, that wasn't the case. So Nick Chubb, yes, this coming week you play against Seattle. Um, hopefully they feed you the ball, man. That's what I'm hoping. I think they will. They're at home this week against the Seahawks. Should be fine. He's my number 12. All right, let's go ahead and move on. Let's talk about my RB2s going into this week. Let me readjust everything here. Whoop. Number 13, Mark Ingram playing against the Cincinnati Bengals. Free matchup. I mean, they can't stop anybody in the running game. Lamar Jackson, Mark Ingram, it depends who's going to score touchdowns in terms of what Mark Ingram is capable of. Mark Ingram, I think right now, in fantasy, he's the number, what is that, number six running back in half PPR? Really, that's that's because he scored so many touchdowns. He has six rushing touchdowns thus far this season, um, and that's pretty much inflating his stats. This coming week, he's not shy of getting another touchdown here. There's always a potential. So if he's going to get his 70 yards and a touchdown and get a little bit of work in the passing game and with 15 fantasy points, I'm not surprised. He's sitting at my fringe RB1, RB2. I like him as my number 12, uh, but I personally prefer playing a guy like Chubb over him. Um, this week, I have Ingram as my number 13. Moving on to number 14, Melvin Gordon. What we saw last week um, was a beatdown, sure. But Melvin Gordon looks to be like he's... He's taken over the number one running back spot of this team. Um, with the amount of rushing attempts, he had 12 to Austin Eckler's only three. And um, the way it looks, 
there's a potential that Melvin Gordon just couldn't come back and take over the role uh, and send Eckler back to being just a flex option, which is potentially what we're anticipating. Now, if Eckler was able to get a lot of work in the passing game, which Melvin Gordon was completely just <laughs> nowhere to be found in that kind of uh, capacity. But even then, I think this coming week at home, a lot of redemption needs to be had. That was a terrible performance from uh, Phillip Rivers this past week. Threw the ball nearly, what, 48 times? Uh, had somewhere near like a 50% passing completion uh, percentage. Uh, just offensively, just not not good enough. And I think this coming week, they have a very favorable matchup. The Steelers, not good defensively, have performed in the last couple weeks. But I'm pretty sure a team like uh, the Chargers can change the script a little bit because of the fact that the Steelers are working with a third-string quarterback. You're not going to be able to move the ball. And then your defense is going to be on the field for a lot of the game. The Chargers are going to be able to beat them down. I think they feed Melvin Gordon the ball and get him back on track. He's my number 14. 15, Sonny Michel. Uh, like I mentioned earlier today, um, a lot of the offensive weapons for the, the Giants are not going to be playing. Therefore, it is going to be the Giants' defense on the field for nearly the entire game. And they can't stop a soul defensively. Uh, and I think Sonny Michel is going to be fed the ball very often. Uh, and he's going to have himself a very good game this week, uh, similar to last week. You know, as long as they give Sony Michel 17 plus touches, he's going to get himself in the end zone. Um, and this offense is just going to roll over them on Thursday night. He's my number 15. Moving on to number 16, Carry On Johnson had a bye week. Like I mentioned, um, the Green Bay Packers not fantastic against stopping the run. But if in fact the Green Bay Packers have themselves, Devonte Adams could be more of a competitive game. It shouldn't hurt Carry On Johnson, in my opinion. He is still going to get his touches on the ground. He is still going to get his work in the passing game, uh, and he is the goal line back. So going forward, you know, Carry On Johnson, a lot of confidence in him as an RB two going forward. He hasn't had a big performance to kind of push him into that RB one conversation just yet. But um, hopefully in time, we'll get there. He's my number 16. Moving on to 17, a guy that has put up double-digit fantasy points in the last couple weeks. Found himself with a receiving touchdown this past week. Devontae Freeman looked pretty good. Plays against the Cardinals. Very favorable matchup. And I really do believe a guy like Devontae Freeman um, in this matchup should be fine. It's going to be a shootout. Uh, And either way, I think uh, Freeman, the amount of touches he's getting through the air on the ground, uh, sustainable enough for you to trust him as an RB2. Uh, you know, he may have been sitting on the bench uh, in the early weeks, but in the last couple weeks has been a solidified RB2, which is exciting to see, uh, especially considering, you know, what Devontae Freeman has done in the past, you know, injuries and inconsistencies uh, apart. Okay, moving on. Let's move on and talk about number 18, Joe Mixon. On the other side of that Bengals matchup, sure, the Bengals can't stop anybody on the run, but truth be told, the Ravens can't really stop an offense either as of late. Um, the Ravens defense has heavily struggled against opposing offenses all over the board, whether it's on the ground or through the air. Um, quarterback, wide receiver, tight end, running back, does not matter. I think Joe Mixon hopefully can get himself more acclimated in this offense this past week against the Cardinals, was given a little bit more work. Now, is that little bit more work um, enough to you know make us think, oh, okay, where the heck is Joe Mixon on my list? Let me see here. I'm actually curious. How many rushing attempts has he kind of been trending towards? Yeah, look, last week had the most rushing attempts of his entire season and had the most rushing yards of his entire season. Is there a correlation? Absolutely. freaking lutely Obviously, playing against the Bengals, one of the worst teams against the run, helps you. But we weren't expecting Joe Mixon to have an incredible game. But at least we saw him improve. 19, excuse me, 19 rushing attempts for 93 rushing yards this last week. That's exactly what you want to see. A little bit of work in the passing game. Sure, you want to see him get into the end zone. Uh, there's always a possibility that they're playing in Baltimore. Um, and I really do think if, in fact, um, this Baltimore offense does not get ahead early, I, it could definitely benefit Joe Mixon. I think it's an RP2. Pretty good, safe spot for him as of right now. Uh, and therefore, he is my number 18. Moving on to number 19, James Conner. I'm a little worried about James Conner only because of the fact that his quarterback is a third string quarterback. Uh, chances are that when you get knocked out on the field for about two minutes, Mason Rudolph's not going to be playing this week. It's going to be, what is it, Hodges? Um, is it Hodges? Let me go. Ahead. I can confirm this in about two and a half seconds. The quarterback is, yeah, Delvin Hodges. Or Devlin, excuse me, Devlin Hodges. Um, that's going to be rough. I, I do think that it's going to be very difficult for the Pittsburgh Steelers to effectively move this offense. Um, as of right now, sure, James Conner is the lone back. Philip Lindsay had a monster game this past week against the Chargers, but I, I think um, there is a potential in which this offense could get potentially just clean slate, zero points, 
just shut down. There is always a possibility of that. Therefore, James Conner is this slow. I don't think I've had him this slow thus far this season. Um, I'm just concerned about the offense as a whole. With no Jalen Samuels, it's very limited um, wildcat potential. And then you have a third-string quarterback. Um, just a little worried. I still think I'm playing him because of the fact that he is James Conner. And I don't want to bench a guy like that. Um, so as of right now, we just leave him at number 19. Moving on to number 20, Austin Eckler. Like I mentioned earlier, the rushing attempts disappeared, unfortunately. A lot of that had to do with game script. But Austin Eckler's relevancy in the passing game did not disappoint. 15 receptions. For those of you who play in a full PPR scoring format, you felt the, the contribution of Austin Eckler this past week. 15 receptions. Incredible. He broke the franchise record for most receptions in a game. Um, absolutely incredible. As long as Austin Eckler is given a fair share of this backfield, hopefully a 50-50 split, he should have RB2 flex value going forward. Him and Melvin Gordon, again, they're only six spots apart. That could switch. It, we could see more Eckler this week. We could see less Melvin Gordon. Only time will tell. But at this moment in time, I do believe um, Eckler is going to see a lim limited role in comparison to uh, Gordon going forward uh, as they kind of get back into what they were doing last year. He's my number 20. Moving on to number 21, Damian Williams. Came back, looked healthy, wasn't utilized a lot because, I mean, that offense, it's very confusing to think that, okay, let's just chalk, let's just wipe away that Sunday night performance against the Colts. This week, you get to play against the Houston Texans. This should be a shootout. The Houston Texans are going to score points. They're coming out to score. And I do not believe that this Kansas City defense is good enough to stop them. Um, the entire game plan for the Indianapolis Colts was we're going to run the ball, we're going to keep the ball out of Patrick Mahomes' hands, we're going to play good defense, and they did. Perfectly fine. I think the Texans are capable of doing the same, but I really do think that it's going to be a higher scoring affair, and I think Damian Williams is going to see more opportunity in this game than he did last week. Therefore, he should be better. He's my number 21. Moving on to 22 and 23. I could just pair them together. Tevin Coleman, Matt Breida. Tevin Coleman saw more rushing attempts. Matt Breida did start the game. I do believe they want to have Tevin Coleman be their RB1 going forward. I do believe that. Uh, that is a reason why they brought him into this organization. There's a reason why Kyle Shanahan, with the comfort of him, because they've, they've, coached each, uh, they've been on the same team before in Atlanta, I have a confidence that they want Tevin Coleman to be the RB1. And they want Matt Breida, because of you know his injury history, to be the RB2. And he's more comfortable there and produces way better there. Um, I mean, even with last season, um, this is a shout out to Mo because he always says it. Uh, even with Alfred Morris and Matt Breida being the RB2, he has always been um, better as that RB2 option. So just saying, uh, as of right now, between the two of these guys, they're being used at a pretty good amount. Now, can they run like they did on the Browns against the, the Rams? I think there's always a possibility of that. I think uh, the potential is absolutely there. Uh, and therefore, both of them are top you know, 24 running backs. And both guys that, um, like I mentioned, I mean, there's always a possibility. Because I, I know somebody on Sunday asked, should I start both of them? Shit, I guess you should have. Because this offense, if they're going to be running over teams like this, like they have in the last couple weeks, um, then they're both viable. And they're if they're both going to get 10 plus you know, rushing attempts a game, uh, it looks like a viable option. All right, so those are the two at 22 and 23. Moving on to my last of my top 24, LaShawn McCoy. I can't not name LaShawn McCoy here. I do believe it's because he's associated with the offense of the Kansas City Chiefs, this is going to be a higher scoring affair. Um, LaShawn McCoy is going to get work in the passing game. He's going to see work on the ground. Um, and he's not going to be as inept as he was this past week with only one fantasy point or something like that. Uh, as of right now, LaShawn McCoy uh, did disappoint, but I, I do think going forward should be fine uh, as an RB2 fringe RB3 flex. So as of right now, he's fine at 24. All right, moving on. Let's talk about my last group at the running back position here. All right, number 25, Carlos Hyde playing against the uh, the Cardinals. I mean, excuse me, playing against the Chiefs. Speaking of the Chiefs, I don't know why. Why did I say Cardinals? Yeah, I don't know why I did. Interesting. Um, plays against the Chiefs. So Marlon Mack, fantastic game. The Chiefs can't stop the run. We've seen that all season long with Mark Ingram, with other teams. That's perfectly fine. We have seen this. Carlos Hyde, I don't think he's going to be given enough rushing work to where uh, he's given 20 rushing attempts and he runs all over this team. I don't believe that to be the case. But he is going to get his 12 rushing attempts. He's going to find himself in the end zone. And he's going to have double digit, you know, scoring points. So as a flex option, RB3, potentially high-end or lower-end RB2, I like Carlos Hyde as my number 25. Moving on to 26, Philip Lindsay. 
Philip Lindsay scares me because he has fantastic performances, right? He has these games in which he blows up and gets a touchdown and he gets 20 plus points. But his rushing attempts, his work in the passing game, his snap counts are not increasing. Even this past week against the Chargers, Royce Freeman had more offensive snaps than Philip Lindsay. You cannot tell me that we're just, I mean, I cannot understand why they don't give Philip Lindsay the ball more. I do not understand why Royce Freeman is given the ball 15 plus times a game. I truly do not understand it. He does not have playmaking ability like Lindsay. Yet they continue to do so. So Lindsay has to suffer now and be an RB3 in hopes that he can score a touchdown or have a big play. Because if you're not given more attempts and if you're not given more opportunity, then you're not going to have the opportunity to every week blow up unless you can just continue to blow up with 14 touches on the ground and have over 100 yards, then sure. But typically that's not going to go that way. They get to play against the Titans. Tough defense against the run. Uh, It's going to be tough on them. So he sits at 26. Moving on to 27, Jordan Howard. I think he solidified himself as the RB1. Um, Sure, Miles Sanders had nine rushing attempts the other day, but it was a lot of garbage time. Uh, Still wasn't able to get many yards. Miles Sanders got a lot of work in the passing game, sure. But Jordan Howard, goal line back. I think he has the fifth most rushing attempts on the goal line uh, in the red zone thus far this season. A guy that is being heavily fed there, and um, rightfully so. And as of right now, he's the RB1 of the team going forward. Another flex option, RB3 uh, or high end or lower end, excuse me, RB2. Moving on to number 28, James White. Should be a one-sided affair. Uh, I'm expecting Rex Burkhead to potentially not play. He was limited yesterday. Um, but if, in fact, Royce, uh, excuse me, Rex Burkhead is to play, it will hurt James uh, White just a tad bit. But I don't think it kills his fantasy value as a lot of his value is coming from the passing game. Uh, and that's where he finds his double-digit work. Uh, the guy has been pretty consistent all season long. I mean, if you're going to continue to get 10 fantasy points a week, um, then we're going to be happy with it. If I'm not mistaken, is it every week that James White is putting up 10 fantasy points? Except for that one week, obviously, that he missed. Yeah. Week 1, 10.7. Week 2, 10.4. Uh, week 4 against the Buffalo Bills, 9.8. This past week, 10.2. I mean, 10 points a game. Do you want that at your flux? Perfect. Put him in there. Should be fine. Moving on to 29. All right. I'm hoping that Adrian Peterson, sitting at 29, can end up being in the top 24 this week. I'm hoping that they run the ball so much that the Washington Redskins give Adrian Peterson another one of these 20 rushing uh, attempts, over 100 rushing yards kind of games. I'm hoping for that. And that's why I'm going to put him at my flex. But at this moment in time, I'm just a little concerned. You never know what's going to happen. You don't know who's even starting at the quarterback position for the Redskins this week. I'm not sure. Um, but as of right now, I have confidence in Adrian Peterson to play this week, despite the last couple weeks of um, pretty much disappearing because they were tough for matchups. We understand that. Uh, but as of right now, Adrian Peterson, 29, pretty confident in that. Should be fine. Now moving on to 30, uh, Peyton Barber. Just when you think Ronald Jones is going to be winning this job, here comes Peyton Barber again. Peyton Barber had a pretty good time against the Carolina Panthers a couple weeks back. Uh, they get to play them again this week. Uh, Peyton Barber continues to get the first um, shot during games as the starting running back and that's not looking like it's changing so as of right now Peyton Barber is the running back of this team uh, and going forward should be fine uh, in this matchup against Carolina Panthers he's my number 30 moving on to 31 Kenyon Drake speaking of this Washington Redskins versus Dolphins matchup I really do think Kenyon Drake has a very good opportunity the Washington Redskins defense is not good they have not performed up to par this season comparatively to what they were doing last year last year they were very often winning games because of the contributions of their defense this year it's not even close so i think Kenyon drake has a very good opportunity this week to be fantasy relevant for the first time this year and put himself you know put himself in a good position to score fantasy points he's my number 31 32 we're talking about royce freeman again like i mentioned royce freeman um not very much playmaking ability if i'm not mistaken has royce freeman even scored a touchdown this year that's my question royce freeman has not scored a touchdown this year am i surprised Absolutely not. Again, no playmaking ability. At least they're giving Philip Lindsay the ball on the goal line. But they continue to feed Royce Freeman the ball way too much. 10, 11, 15, 6, 13. Stop. Please. Give Philip Lindsay the ball. Let him. He's literally Christian McCaffrey Jr. Philip Lindsay is. I have Royce Freeman on this list because of the fact that he is giving the ball so often. And he's getting, you know, 8 plus fantasy points per game. And that could be a you know a contributing factor as a flex option if you don't have anything else. I understand that there are people on bye week, 
So as of right now, Royce Freeman sits at 32. Not excited about it, but it is what it is. Moving on to number 33, Ronald Jones. Um, I do think Ronald Jones could have a chance here. If, in fact, Peyton Barber comes out, can't muster anything together, uh, Ronald Jones has a chance to where, oh, okay, you know what, let me go ahead and take a couple snaps here and uh, win this job. Unfortunately, we've seen a lot of inconsistency in the, the amount of rushing attempts they're giving Ronald Jones. In this kind of a matchup in which the Tampa Bay Buccaneers could take the lead early, there's always a potential that Ronald Jones comes out and takes a couple snaps, makes something of it, and then they run with the hot hand. There's always a possibility of that. I just want to, again, Royce Freeman, Ronald Jones, let's be careful with these guys, right? Just be careful. Moving on to 34, another guy we should be worried about, but this is the first time he's making his appearance on the list of the top 36 thus far this season. In week six, we're talking about Gus Edwards because I really do think that this Bengals matchup against the Jack, uh, the Baltimore uh, Ravens, the, the Lamar Jacksons, pretty much, I think it's going to be a one-sided affair in which we get um, the entire Baltimore offense just running all over this team. And I think Gus Edwards is going to contribute. He's going to be given the ball, you know, six, seven, eight times. He's going to have, you know, 60 somewhat yards, uh, potentially a touchdown late in the game. I think Gus Edwards... Sneaky play. Just putting it out there. Moving on to 35, John Hilleman. Like I was mentioning, it's going to be tough to find a relevant fantasy option for the Giants this week. If you are desperate enough and you are in need of a running back and you're playing in a 16-man league and there's nothing available and you have bye weeks, John Hilleman is an option. I don't really want to play him against the Giants, um, but he's on the list. Therefore, you know, consider it. Uh, number 36, Chris Thompson. If, in fact, Adrian Peterson takes over this offense and is given the ball 25 times, then Chris Thompson goes bye-bye. But if, in fact, they contri- they're using both of them in the running game, using both of them in the passing game, there is a better opportunity for Chris Thompson at least have some contributions. Um, there are a couple other names that kind of deserve to be on this list but have been a little bit inconsistent as of late, so they stay off the list. Rankings are always subject to change, guys. And that's pretty much it. Those are my top 36 rankings for week six of the fantasy football season at the running back position. Thank you, everybody, for watching. Thank you for spending your time today watching this video, whether it's Monday, Wednesday, Tuesday, you know, Friday, that doesn't matter. Thank you for watching. I appreciate everybody. And until tomorrow, which will be the wide receiver Wednesday episode, uh, talking about my top 36 rankings of the wide receiver position, we will see you then. Oh, also, really quickly, before we leave, uh, I forgot to mention Zay Jones was signed by the Raiders. That's relevant for those of you who are looking for a wide receiver to pick up this Wednesday or, you know, tonight uh, for waivers. Also, speaking of the Thursday night matchup, um, Odell Beckham going forward, we're gonna, you're going to see it from my rankings. I just can't trust them. Just can't trust them. Jarvis is okay. Chubb is fine. Baker is MIA. The other side of the ball looking good. They fed the ball to Kittle. A beautiful amount. That's what I want to see. That's what the, that's the kittle I want to see coming back. So as of right now, I'm not going to spend too much time on it. But um, man, the Browns, yikes. Anyway, thank you everybody for watching. Tomorrow, wide receivers. I'll see you then. Peace, guys.